Yeah, hello. Uh, let us discuss about estimating cost. So at this stage we have uh, the scope baseline coming as an input. We have the project schedule coming as an input. We have the human resource plan. We have the risk register. We have the enterprise environmental factors and we have the organizational process assets. So all these things are coming as an input and the tools and techniques we use for cost estimation are expert judgment, analogous estimation, parametric estimation, bottom-up estimation, three-point estimates, and then we talk about reserve analysis, cost of quality, project management estimating software, and vendor bid analysis. And the output is the activity cost estimates uh, and the basis of estimates, including the assumptions we make and the project document updates. So when we do the cost estimate, sometimes we may have to go back and update the, the charter or the plan uh, based on the, the cost which we are getting. Uh, so any document can get updated at any time during uh, estimating cost. Uh, this is a sequence. We had the scope, then decompose that into WBS, decompose that further into activities. Then we sequence those activities based on their dependencies. Then we got into activity resource estimation, activity duration estimation, schedule development, and cost estimation. Uh, sometimes we may have to include the, the depreciation uh, benefits or the corporate or organizational administrative cost and other overheads. Now let's say I'm purchasing, I purchased this laptop uh, yesterday to conduct this training today. The question is, okay, should I put uh, all the, the entire cost of the laptop to this particular one, one session? No, maybe in a month I may be conducting a couple of classroom trainings and then online trainings and the life of the laptop will run for maybe a couple of years. So every year I'll be doing around 24 programs, classroom training, and uh, the life is, so in two years time, I'll be doing around 50 programs. So if the laptop cost me 50,000 rupees, uh, maybe I may apportion maybe 1,000 rupees uh, to every program. So that is the, the straight line depreciation method. And there is a double declining method. That means when you buy an electronic item, or uh, the depreciation is given maximum during the early years. That's like if you buy a laptop today and tomorrow if you're selling it, there will be heavy depreciation in the pricing. So initial years, the depreciation will be higher and the later years, the depreciation will be lower. That is double declining. Or it's also known as accelerated depreciation. Then sometimes we may have to include uh, corporate organization administrative cost and other overheads as well. Uh, it's all governed by organizational policies. Uh, some common types of estimates. We have this order of magnitude estimate. Uh, this is generally made very early in the project, developed within without benefit of detailed data, and often based on historical data, expert judgment, or a costing model. Uh, so, order, order of magnitude estimate, or it's also known as ballpark estimate, is always done, uh, is very inaccurate. Uh, the expected accuracy level is minus 25 to plus 75 percentage. Then comes the, the, the budgetary estimate. For budgetary estimate, the expected accuracy levels are minus 10 to plus 25 percentage. And for approximate estimate, uh, the estimated accuracy levels are plus or minus 15 percentage and for definitive estimates uh, the accuracy levels are plus or minus 5 percentage and this cannot be achieved without the uh, help of a, a WBS. Uh, so without a WBS we will not be able to get a definitive estimate that's for sure. Then sometimes when we get into rolling wave or moving window planning that means when the project is running for a for a very long time, maybe a couple of years time. We may not do the end-to-end -end fully blown plan. So we'll define the milestones and for the immediate window, we will decompose that into activities and all. So immediate window, we'll have 
a definitive plan, whereas things falling far away, we may have uh, a budgetary estimate only. So estimates can exist as at various levels. Uh, similarly, a schedule can also exist at various levels. Then comes the determining budget. Uh, so once the costs are estimated, then that is baseline, then that becomes the budget. So now the inputs are activity cost estimates is included and the basis for estimates is also coming as an input. Then the scope baseline, project schedule, resource calendars, contract copy and organizational process assets, all these things are coming as an input. And the tools and techniques, the cost aggregation and reserve analysis, nothing but buffer analysis, expert judgment, based on your expertise you can design, historical relationship, uh, based on historical data, we can uh, arrive at the, we can determine the budget. So, uh, yeah. And then funding limit reconciliation, especially if you have taken a housing loan, uh, the, the, for the project, for the housing project, the bank will not give the entire amount in one go. Maybe till the, once the foundation is done, they'll give you 10 percentage. Once the walls are done, they'll give you another 20 percentage. Once the roof is done, they'll give you a little more. So that is, a, we call it as a funding limit based on the historical inf in, uh, relationship of the, they have this funding limit reconciliation. So if I've completed only foundation, but if I've consumed 30 percentage of the budget, then, then there is some serious problem with that. The outputs are cost performance baseline, project funding requirements, and project document updates. Uh, cost budgeting is a process necessary for aggregating the estimated costs of individual activities or work packages to establish a cost baseline. We call it as a cost budgeting. A cost baseline is a time phase budget that will be used to monitor and measure the cost performance throughout the project life cycle. In one, one place where I work, we had these monthly budgets for the projects. So, January, I had a budget. I should consume that in January itself. Otherwise, I cannot carry it forward to February. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so we call it as a cost baseline. Uh, there are reasons for it. Uh, this is for strictly controlling the controlling the budget. This is the best practice, especially if your client is following the gap practices, the generally accepted accounting practices, most probably they'll insist on uh, a cost baseline based a time phase budget and tracking it based on the under timeline. So with this, we have completed the uh, estimating cost and determining budget. Remembering uh, for every type of budget, Remembering those, uh, those ranges are very critical because for the exam you will get questions. Uh, so that part you should take care. Uh, thank you very much.